Between 1988 and 1990, I had a full grant and scholarship to attend Centenary College in Shreveport, Louisiana. Part of my scholarship was joining the School of Church Careers and getting a degree in general ministry, as well as a degree in elementary education. At the time, the Methodist denomination had become so liberal that they approved of abortion, took all the he references out of the hymn book, accepted diverse views on sexuality, and saw the Bible as more or less figurative fables. Looking back, that's something I can picture a church doing now, but not back in the late 80s. Exactly the opposite of the typical student who pursued a degree in religion at the time, I was 28 years old with two kids, radically saved at 24 from a druggy lifestyle, and attended a spirit-filled church for the music, freedom to dance, and frequent manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Once a month, we future ministers, about 50 of us, met together to learn another aspect of the Methodist perspective. A female hospital chaplain came to discuss giving a Buddhist, or was it a Hindu, a deathbed sort of last rites to a patient as an act of Christ's love for him and his family. After her speech, I felt, quote, led, end quote, to ask her, where is Christ in what you did when you didn't even mention his name? How can we be his disciples if we don't tell people about Jesus? I knew this was going to cause strife, but I didn't know it was going to result in such a conflict that students would be standing up, yelling at each other until the convocation was basically shut down. I was proud of myself for standing up for the name of Jesus and felt sure the Lord would say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I saw myself like Paul, drawing out the conflict between the Pharisee and the Sadducees. When I got home to my one-bedroom duplex, I got the opposite response. First, the Lord reminded me of Proverbs 6, that he hates those who sow discord between brethren. He informed me I'd just done something he literally hates. But Lord, I argued, I, I love you so much, I stood up for your name. I don't need you to defend me, he replied. I can almost hear the, who do you think you are, tone. I can stand up for myself whenever I want. You will go to the leadership Monday morning and apologize. Coincidentally, Monday morning, the two leaders, both professors in the theological college, called me in for a meeting. Unbeknownst to me, they were about to kick me out of the program. I saw them look at each other in disbelief when I began my speech of contrition. They basically said they were about to tell me this program was not for me, but could tell my heart change was sincere, so they kept me. A month later, I wound up with a Methodist ministry degree from Centenary College. Moral to the story? God's love for peace among people far exceeds what name they choose to call him, her, them, however you see it.